Now we're going to start off with Kepler's first law, but we need to mention something to make the first law easier to understand. If you wanted to draw an ellipse on a piece of paper, you'd need two drawing pins. You'd also need a length of string that doesn't stretch, and a pen or a pencil. Now when you place a string around the pencil and the pins like this, and trace a continuous line on this piece of paper, and at the same time making sure that this string is fully stretched, we'd end up with an elliptical shape. Now because this string doesn't stretch, the sum of these two distances here remains constant. So if we call this distance A and this distance B, A plus B is equal to some constant value. And no matter where our pencil is on our ellipse, the sum of these two lengths here will always be this constant value. Now these pins here represent our focal points. So we can call this pin here focal point 1 and this focal point 2. And the tip of our pencil here will represent a planet orbiting a star around one of these focal points. So it could either be the first focal point or the second focal point. So Kepler's first law states each planet travels in an elliptical orbit around the sun and the sun is at one of the focal points. So let's say our sun is at the first focal point here and our planet is over here. If we bring these focal points closer and closer together, we'll get more of a circular orbit. And if both focal points are in the same place, we would get a perfectly circular orbit. Kepler's second law is all about understanding how the speeds of planets vary during their elliptical orbit. The second law states, an imaginary line drawn from the sun to any planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. So let's break this down. This diagram shows a planet orbiting the Sun at different instances in time. When the planet is close to the Sun, as it is here, this imaginary line sweeps out an area of A1 in this time interval, delta T1. When this planet is further away from the Sun, this imaginary line will sweep out exactly the same area as A1 in the same amount of time. So these two time intervals here are equal to one another. And so are these areas. But what we need to notice here is that the distance the planet travels in these time intervals are different. When the planet is closer to the Sun, it travels a lot faster. It covers a lot more distance in the same amount of time than it does if it's a lot further away from the Sun. And this is really what Kepler's second law is telling us. So Kepler's third law can be written like this. The ratios of the squares of the periods of any two planets about the Sun is equal to the ratio of the cubes of their average distances from the Sun. Now what the hell does this mean? Now this can be really difficult to get your head around, so it's far easier to memorise this in equation form and then try and word out Kepler's third law in sentence form. So in equation form, we start off on the left hand side with a ratio and we're looking at the ratio of the periods of any two planets and the period is simply the time it takes the planet to complete one single orbit. So the period of the first planet 
represented by T here. The second planet. Now the ratio of the squares of the periods of any two planets means that we have to square both these periods here. So we've got a ratio of the periods here and these periods are squared. Now these planets are orbiting the Sun, so about the Sun here. And this ratio is equal to another ratio. And what's that ratio? So now we've got a ratio of the average distances of these planets from the Sun. But we can represent the average distance of our planet 1 with an R. And these average distances are cubed. So we'll cube that up there. And remember, we're looking at a ratio here. So we divide that by the average distance of the second planet. And that's also cubed. So this is Kepler's third law in equation form. It is the ratio of the squares of the periods of two planets in the solar system being equal to the ratio of the cubes of the average distances of both planets from the Sun. So this is this is planet one, this is planet two. We're interested in the average distance. And the period is simply the time it takes for the planet to complete one orbit around the Sun. So let's understand this better with an example problem. So our problem says, imagine you send a satellite into orbit and this satellite has an average distance of 7,880 kilometers from the Earth's center of mass. The orbital period of this satellite is 1.93 hours. The Moon's orbital period is 27.3 days. Now with this information, we need to use Kepler's third law to find the average distance between the centers of the Moon and the Earth. In other words, the Earth-Moon distance. So this here is our satellite, and this is the moon. This is the Earth. We already have the average distance of this satellite here, and we'll call this R1. We're trying to work out the average distance between the center of the moon's mass and the center of the Earth's mass. We'll call that R2. We already know the periods of both the satellite and the moon. So the period of the satellite is T1, which equals 1.93 hours. And the orbital period of the moon, T2, is equal to 27.3 days, which is 27.3 times 24 hours. Now, if we write Kepler's third law in equation form, We've got the ratios of the squares of the orbital periods, T1 and T2, and that's equal to the cubes of the average distances, the ratio of the cubes of the average distances of both orbiting objects. So all we need to do to find the Moon's average distance is rearrange this equation to make R2 the subject of the formula. So if we rearrange this equation here, we end up with the average Earth-Moon distance cubed is equal to the average satellite distance cubed from the center of the Earth multiplied by the Moon's period squared divided by the satellite's period squared. And to get rid of this cube term, we cube root the right hand side. And all we do now is just plug in these values. So the average Earth Moon distance is equal to the cube root of the satellite distance cubed multiplied by 655 hours 
squared divided by 1.93 hours squared. And we get a value of 3.83 times 10 to the 5 kilometers to three significant figures, which is very close to the actual value.